Hey guys, how you doing? It's Craig here. Remember me? <laughs> I have uh, a couple of things I want to taste for you. And um, one of them is a bottle of wine that was sent in. And another one is some beer kit that was sent in, which happens to be a stout. So um, I'll do the wine first because I don't want to forget the name of the grapes. Um, this was sent in by um, Dennis from Alabama. And uh, this is, he made this from a type of grape called a muscadine. Muscadine, or yeah, that's how it's pronounced. And it's, he sent a, a, a letter with it, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember as much as I can from the letter. Um, he, he, he picks the grapes. They're not really wine type grapes like California grapes or anything like that. Uh, these grapes are different. They have a different kind of flavor to them. Something that they call foxy, which is a kind of a more potent flavor. And he says they're different every year and he picks them and he crushes them himself and makes the juice and he, you know, ferments them. They don't produce, they don't have a lot of sugar in them. So he has to add a little bit of sugar to the must uh, to get the alcohol. He doesn't put any clearing agents. Uh, he just makes it and he's not worried about competitions or anything like that. He just um, brews it for his own consumption and for, for mine in this case. Um, so that's what they do. And um, so he's got it, uh, you know, I'll take that off now. He's got it sort of done up with the whole shrink wrap thing and all that. So let's get into this. I have no idea what this is going to taste like. I'm very curious. So what happens here? Does that just pop off? I'm not, I'm not a wine opener kind of guy. Um, all right, we'll just, <laughs> here we go. The, don't, have you guys, any of you guys have watched my videos for any length of time, you know that I'm always awkward with getting into things here. Okay, we're just gonna, oh, there we go. Don't take me to a fancy restaurant, whatever you do. All right, let's get into here. And, uh. Oh, did you notice my nice little cardboard here of beautiful white wine that's ready to bottle? Yeah, baby. All right. So I have a very primitive wine bottle opener. I have to get one of those other ones, but let me see if I can crank this off. Oh, there we are. There will come a day, my friends, when I will not be able to do that anymore. I won't have it in my back. <laughs> so I have my nice, make sure there's no, I have my nice crystal thrift store wine glass here. Um, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Jeez, there you go. So here we have it, okay, a muscadine wine, home brewed from Alabama, USA. Let's give it a whirl. <sighs> um, I can't smell too much, let's, come on, Craig, let's go. Gotta do that too, don't forget to do that. Gotta massage it as it's coming out, you know, like that, you see? As it's pouring. It's got a nice pink color. I probably poured too much. I, I know that I'm not a, I, I'm not, I don't even know which fork to use at a restaurant, okay? So, you know, whatever. Um, I think you're supposed to start from the outside and work your way in, but I'm not sure. I learned that from the movie um, uh, Titanic, so. Who knows? Nice and clear. Not crystal clear because he didn't use any clearing agents, but it is clear. And I think the glass fogged up a little bit too. See how, there we go. Hmm. Hmm. It smells like strawberries actually, to be honest. Yeah, it's got a kind of a, kind of a strawberry nose. Kind of like Rudolph. Okay, let's give, I know I'm full of stupid jokes today. I'm just in a good mood. Okay, let's give this a try. Cheers, cheers, Dennis. Thank you so much for sending me this. Uh, I hope you washed your feet before you stomped on the grapes. Cheers. Oh, oh man. <laughs> that is so interesting. It kind of reminds me of a strawberry Zinfandel, if you've ever had one of those. So it's relatively sweet. 
Um, not too sweet though, because I'm not into sweet wines really, but this is nice because it's got the sweetness, but at the same time it's got the, you know, sort of the tartness to it as well. And I did refrigerate it, so it'll get different as it moves along. I might be double-fisted here in a little while, so we'll see. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. It, it has a strawberry flavor to it. That is, it's nothing like a, you know, a red wine or a kind of a white wine that you would buy a table wine. It's nothing like that. Um, it's not strong, you know, you see, it's, it, you can't taste the alcohol. Um, it just has a pleasantly sweet, fruity, kind of a strawberry um, taste. You know, I, I can't pick out any, people talk about pectins and things like that. He doesn't worry about changing the pH of the water or doing anything strange or funny to this wine. He just makes it. There's no rules. He doesn't follow, you know, guidelines or anything like that. And um, so it's just a very natural product. It's way better than a strawberry Zinfandel. <laughs> that is incredible. I know I always say that when people send things, but if I don't think it's any good, I won't film it. That's really what, that's where I'm at with this kind of thing, you know? I don't want to embarrass people. You know, they, they might try and make something and they'll send it to me and maybe it's a little off. And I'll just, I'll just contact them and say, Mm, this is what I think of it. It's up to you what you want me to do. You want me to make a video still? And, you know, so, because I don't want to come on here and go, oh, this is terrible. So, you know, that's why that is. You know, I, people think, oh, he likes everything. No, I don't. I just, you know, I like to, I like to um, encourage people when they do such an awesome job at making this stuff. Um, I like to encourage them and, 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 you know, make them, you know, proud. As if you wouldn't already be proud if you made this wine because it's delicious and you could get bombed off of this. So we better be very careful, <laughs> be very careful. I won't drink this whole bottle today. I will save some of this for tonight when I'm sitting around on YouTube and doing stuff. So this is, um, wow, this is really good. Dennis, this is awesome. Tell your friends or whoever it is that, you know, your people down there who make this, that I up here in Canada, I love this. This is awesome. Thank you very much. I'll take one more sip and then I'll get a stout out of the fridge there and we'll taste that and I'll come back to this and you know, we'll be double fisted. How's that? Sound like fun? I'm in. Mm-hmm. Mm. Foxy, baby, foxy. That's nice wine. Want to meet a girl like this in a nice restaurant. This is a beautiful, a beautiful thing. Okay, I will go over there and get a bottle, or sorry, a glass of beer, which I will talk about as soon as I get back. Just a second. All right. Here we have a home-brewed stout. This was, this beer kit was brought to me, actually delivered, by a fellow named, uh, I don't know if he wants his first name mentioned, so I'm just gonna call him Beer Me Two. It's Beer Me Two number two on vonlive.tv. That's his nickname. I, I, I never asked him if he wanted his first name. I don't think it would matter, but just, just to be safe, he knows who he is. He came down to the dungeon and hung out for a little while, a little while back and uh, checked out some vinyl and uh, checked out my, my clutter and everything else. And we sat and we had a couple beers. He made a torpedo. He made a torpedo beer from a beer kit, which I have still, and everything's in the refrigerator. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make it, like, soon. I keep saying this, but I, I won't go into details about work, okay? Just, you know, be patient with me. We're gonna make a torpedo beer kit. And he brought these that he made himself, and they were delicious. Um, so, and if you've never tried a torpedo beer, if you can get them, what an amazing beer that is. So, this is a stout. Uh, lost a little bit of foam there. Let's give this a whirl. It's made from an extract kit. 
it had one, no, two hop additions, no, one hop addition at the 60 minute mark at the boil. Um, so it boiled for 60 minutes, just an extract beer. Um, I used USO5 yeast. He recommended USO4, but I didn't have that, so I used O5. Or maybe it was the other way around. I don't remember. I just got it written down somewhere. And I fermented it, and it's finished, and I put did all the instructions, and I put it in the keg, and here it is. It's a stout. Let's give this a whirl. Cheers. Thank you, beer me too. Jeez, you guys are you guys are kind to me. Thank you. Cheers. Mm hmm <laughs> Yeah, that is nice. Mmm, that's a good beer. Oh, you know, it's not super like deep chocolatey, you know, like a thick stouty kind of, you know, where if you drink too many of them, you're going to, you know, ugh. it's just, it's kind of reminds me a little bit of a, oh, I don't know, a, like a, 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 a dark porter. I'm trying to think of the type, the beer, the brand, I can't remember now. Um, Oh, I know. Newcastle Brown Ale. Okay. Yeah. But it's not a brown ale. You can't see through it. It's blacker than all get out. But it's a very sessionable stout. And it has, um, you know, mild hops, mild chocolate, mild sort of caramel. A little bit of kind of a coffee in there, you know like a black coffee, cold coffee. Um, and everything is well blended. There's nothing that sticks out. Um, and it's just a nice tasting stout, a nice beer. You can drink this all night. It's not heavy. Um, I've got it, you know, medium carbonation. Um, and it definitely, I have had this already before, so I'm not, this isn't my first time drinking it, but it has improved over time. Um, and when I first put it in the keg and poured it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't produce any of this stuff at all but now it's developing a nice um, body to it and a nice mouth feel so um, very nice and especially for an extract only, an extract only well there were some grains in there uh, there was some I, I don't know what was in it I've shown the picture again here on the screen um, don't know what grains they were but they definitely had a chocolatey smell to them and maybe some caramel I'm not sure but you know these companies they don't want you to know what's in them or otherwise you wouldn't buy the kit you'd do it make it yourself so you know they have their secrets and you just buy the you buy the kit and you um and you make it and it's super easy i made this in mm, well one maybe one and a half to two hours because you got to let things heat up and cool down and plus the hour boil and then you have to you know get it into the keg and stuff like that and it's super easy and a very nice um medium bodied medium flavored stout i would call this a, a a mild stout or a dark um porter somewhere in between there it's got that little gray area that where these those two beer styles kind of overlap so thank you beer me too this is a i'll enjoy this um very much i this is a nice a very nice beer hey there's nothing like free beer <laughs> thank you cheers Hmm. Ah, oh, it's a few simple ingredients, a couple hours of your time, or five or six hours of your time, whatever it is you choose, and you've got the best beer on the planet. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, unless you're going out and, you know, you're these, there's craft breweries everywhere now. It's amazing. Beer has become so, you know, important now, and flavor has become more important because. You know, if you look up the history of beer and, you know, the beginnings of how it came over here and everything like that, <clears throat> they just did lagers. You know, it was just, all it was was, you know, just let's get beer out. You know, let's ferment whatever we can and call it beer. You know, it's got to have, it's got to have, you know, malted barley in it. And it's got to have hops. And then as long as it's got those, we can call it beer. And they put corn, sugar and all this other stuff in it, you know, and make it, you know, which we do sometimes when we brew our own stuff too. But, you know, it wasn't as important years ago, I don't think that uh, it was, everything was just lager. But it seems like nowadays, excuse me, there's all these craft breweries everywhere that are making such amazing beers. And there's so many out there to try. And, you know, I would rate this as a, a good quality craft beer. 
call me silly. You know, I brewed it over here in the in the thing with you know, extracts and you know whatever. It's it's a good beer. There's nothing wrong with this, and there's no weird flavors. There's no astringencies, as they call it. Um, it doesn't taste like stressed or anything. That doesn't have that banana taste or that band aid you know taste people talk about. It doesn't have any of that. You know, I brewed it at a, you know as low a temperature as I could. Probably it's probably about 68 degrees down here right now. So that's where I brewed it. No heat belts or anything like that. And it, it's, it's healthy, happy beer. That's all I can say. Hmm. Maybe I should take some out to the guy mowing the grass out there. <laughs> hey guy, want a beer? <laughs> there you go. All right, so that's that. I will, I will bring this other one back into the picture here. Double fisted, you know, I get, after I'm done making these video, video, videos, videos, I'm usually a little hammered because I'm, you know, look at me here, trying to taste things for you guys, but it's not a bad, uh, not, a, not a bad, you know, hobby really when you have to make videos and taste stuff. It's, it's pretty good. Let's give this a whirl. Now it's warmed up a little bit. So there's going to be a difference. This is, this is not a very sweet beer. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah, I can see what they mean when they say foxy. Anyway, all right, well, I should get going, let you guys get back to your normal lives. Thank you very much for watching, and please, I, I, I do apologize for the space between the videos. I am working on uh, getting things more frequent. I, I promise you that. Um, and, and I, I kind of have to anyways, because I, I kind of keep these channels up, up and going. And I also am very passionate about my vinyl channel, which is, you know, vinyl records, those big black things, um, which is called Vinyl TV, and I'll put a link down below uh, in the description for that as well. I do love music, and I love vinyl records, and we are collecting them again, and it's become a huge thing again. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to last, but... Um, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is, and we're having a lot of fun with it. So come on over and subscribe if you'd like, and I would love to see you there. And just, you know, if you'd like to see me gab about stuff and show things, well, there you are. And even if you don't have a turntable, um, you know, you, there's more content there for you to enjoy if you feel in, inclined. Okay? Thank you guys very much, and we'll see you soon in the kitchen as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Beer Me, and thank you, Dennis, who sent these wonderful products in for me to try. Harmony. It's dinner time. <laughs> okay, I'll let you go. Thank you, guys. Cheers. 17. See ya.